Number five. I have to say this, to, to my mind, it's, it's the most painful part of this uh, business. The handling of the atonement itself in most discussions of universalists is deeply manipulative. A and I say it with respect, I say it with brokenness, but it is blasphemous. I, you just have to say it. You simply cannot talk about the cross in such slighting, denunciatory, cheapening, belittling ways. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was made sin for us, he who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God set him forth to be the propitiation for our sins that God might be just and the one who justifies the ungodly. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. It will not do to say, yes, but there are only three or four instances where the word propitiation is used. Be because the doctrine of substitutionary, penal atonement does not turn on one word. Behind the various words used, <coughs> is the massive structure of the Old Testament. That's one of the reasons why this topic is tied into this conference. B because in the Old Testament, begin, for example, with the Passover. You could begin a lot earlier than that, but begin with Passover. W what is the Passover about? B because of the God-ordained sprinkling of the blood of the Lamb on the two doorposts and the lintel, God, through His angel of destruction, passes over and that is celebrated year after year, year after year, year after year, year after year, until we hear the Apostle Paul saying, Christ, our Passover, has been crucified for us. He has been sacrificed for us. That is, because of Christ, the wrath of God has passed over us. He has taken what should have come to us. Or think of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, where the high priest once a year takes the blood of bull and goat and, and, and goes behind the veil and presents it before God, sprinkling it on the Ark of the Covenant. And, and this to turn aside the judgment of God, both for his own sins and for the sins of the people. Year after year after year after year. That was understood. That was taught. And, and Hebrews picks up the theme and says, but don't you understand the ultimate Yom Kippur has happened. It's happened in the cross. Don't you see that? You don't have to use the word propitiation to talk about penal substitutionary atonement. So, so please, if, if you are amongst the universalists and you think that those of us who see things a little differently are wrong, we don't mind if you say pretty demeaning things about us. But I beg of you, do not say demeaning things about the cross.